Hey friends of Keycloak, nice to see you again. And today I brought you two cups of espresso. Why two cups? So imagine these are two Keycloak servers and we want to make one big Keycloak cluster out of it. Cheers. Running a Keycloak cluster is not that hard, but you have to know a few things to get it up and running. So let's have a look to my environment. As usual, I'm running a Docker Compose environment on my local machine. And uh, we're starting with a database. In my case, a PostgreSQL database. And um, it's essential to have a common database for all cluster members. So if your cluster instances, your members have own databases, it won't work. First thing, common database is a must. So then we have uh, the Keycloak instance itself. Um, I have duplicated the Keycloak instances here. And if you're wondering why I use Docker Compose and not uh, Kubernetes um, instance, a mini Kubernetes on my, my machine, uh, simple thing, I don't like Kubernetes, but that's a personal thing. So we have um, the, uh, the, the Keycloak server. Um, it's bound to the PostgreSQL database. And um, we have a front-end URL on port uh, 8000. This is because um, I'm setting um, a proxy before the Keycloak instances. Um, with, it's the, the common entry point for the, the Keycloak cluster. Uh, the usual thing, the Keycloak user and password for the initial um, things. And we need the address forwarding setting to true because uh, we're running behind the proxy, behind the load balancer. and Keycloak has to know that we are running behind the load balancer. So this is also essential. And my Keycloak container depends on the PostgreSQL database and also the second Keycloak container um, is running the same, configured the same. Front-end URL is accessible via port 8000. The um, container itself is running on port 8080, the, the uh, default port, and the no ports are uh, opened to uh, to the local machine because we don't access Keycloak server directly. We're accessing the servers through the load balancer. In my case, it's an X. And um, this Engine X is running on port 8000 and we're opening the port to uh, the local machine. And the configuration for the load balancer is also an essential thing. Um, we need to forward some headers. And um, the first uh, header we need uh, to forward is the X forwarded for header. That's one of the um, of the, the headers we have to forward uh, from the load balancer to Keycloak and the X forwarded proto header. Uh, and we have to preserve the host name. So the rest of the uh, headers are um, not mandatory. The proto, the X forwarded for, and the host is essential. Uh, the rest is just a minimal Nginx configuration. I'm not an Nginx expert. Um, it just works for my example. I have um, the, the upstream, the backend for the KC1 and the KC2 uh, running on ADAD both and uh, have a timeout if one of them fails. So back here and um, the nice thing is, if you're running in an environment where um, your network uh, allows multicast and UDP is enabled, uh, you don't have to specify anything else. You just can power up your servers and they will find each other uh, because of multicast. So let's have a look into it. We're um, running or powering up our, um, our cluster. And um, it's a clean environment. Even the database is not created. We have to create the database and uh, starting the complete environment. Database is starting. The KC2 is starting. KC1 is starting. The load balancer is starting. And now we have to uh, wait a few seconds until all the servers are powered up. And um, if we have a look at the, the log output, when the server is started, we will see some um, entries of cluster view. 
So this is um, a thing you have to look in your logs um, if your cluster is um, complete. So received new cluster view, the, the KC2 instance uh, says received new cluster view for channel EJB. The EJB channel is the default name for the cluster. Um, for this host name, 7A32, and it uh, consists out of two hosts, the 7A32 and the 9012. These are the two host names of the Docker containers. You can have a look to the uh, running Docker containers. Um, minus A. We have uh, the KC1 and the KC2. It's a 7A32 and the um, 9012. These are also mentioned here. If you see such an entry in your logs, the cluster is up and running. So pretty easy, just running, starting two key clock instances and um, they will find each other if you have multicast enabled and UDP allowed in your network. So in most networks, it won't work because multicast is not enabled uh, or UDP is disabled or whatever. In cloud networks, there's no multicast. Um, so we can stop these containers again. And if you don't have the possibility to, uh, to use multicast, you have um, the possibility to configure some other cluster discovery protocols. So um, this uh, default protocol is called ping. And as I said already, it's using multicast and UDP. Uh, if you have fixed email, um, IP addresses of your cluster members, um, you can use a thing called TCP ping and you have to configure all the um, IP addresses or the fixed host names of your Keycloak clusters or cluster members. Or if you don't um, have fixed IP addresses, fixed host names for your uh, members, you can use uh, other um, discovery protocols. And the most flexible uh, in my point of view, in my eyes, is um, the JDBC ping. So you can enable um, the JGroups discovery protocol JDBC ping um, with the environment variable JGroups discovery protocol if you use the, do um, the, the Docker container of Keycloak. Um, there's also, besides the JDBC ping, there's a uh, DNS ping or a cube ping if you're um, using uh, Kubernetes. This might be a better fit uh, for a Kubernetes environment to use uh, the DNS ping or the cube ping. But the most flexible one is the JDBC ping, in my point. Um, and also we have to um, configure it with a few properties. So the J JDBC ping um, is creating a database table and putting the information of the cluster members in a database table and all the cluster members accessing this database table and um, can so look up uh, where are the other members located. Um, for this thing, we have to specify the data source chain DA name. Um, this is the, the, the Keycloak data source we can use because it's just one table added. And this table, which uh, will be added, doesn't, um, doesn't clash with, with uh, default Keycloak tables. And so we can uh, use this um, data source, which is already configured in the Keycloak server. So um, another thing I have to um, uh, specify is the initialize SQL statement to create the table itself. Because the default in JDBC ping um, is MySQL dialect. And because I'm using PostgreSQL, I have to adjust the initialize SQL statement because the uh, MySQL statement won't work. So I have to um, uh, take the, the original SQL from um, the JDBC ping sources and adjust it um, to my needs for the um, PostgreSQL database. And uh, there's a third parameter, the remove all the data on view change, because sometimes um, if a, a key clock node goes down, um, and the um, entry will not be completely removed from the database. And with the remove all data on view change, uh, you can enforce to um, update the, the database table. Um, if something in the cluster view changes. So that's um, what we have to do. And um, then there's uh, there are some other um, parameters 
we can specify these are the cache owners and the cache owners out sessions. Um, these are um, the numbers to how many cluster members the data will be replicated over the network. So um, it should always be more than one, um, but less than um, the entire uh, amount of your key clock servers. Of course, we have an entire, um, entire amount of uh, two servers, and so we have to specify more than one. We have to specify two. Um, otherwise, if we don't um, specify the, the uh, owner, owners of uh, on more than one server, um, the data itself is only stored on one server. And if this server goes down, the data is lost because the data itself about the session, the authentication session is only stored in memory and not in the database. And so we have to specify more than one server that we have uh, reliable data in case a server goes down. So we have to enable this and we have to enable this again for the um, first server. And then again, start the cluster waiting to um, for the um, key clock servers to start up. The database table will be created during um, the startup of the, the servers now. And the servers will uh, enter their own information into the database table. So here at this point, you can see uh, setting J groups discovery to JDBC ping with some properties and um, all the things will be done in the background. Servers are now starting again. And if nothing goes wrong, there are again our cluster views are added. Everything seems good. Key clock servers are started. Second server is up. First server is up and running. And if we now go to our browser and go to a local host port 8000, of course not 8080 because they are not opened. We have to access 8000, the load balancer. We can log in into our key clock server. And, um, and there we are. So we don't know on which server we're actually running because um, this is not shown here. Um, but um, we can now try to, uh, to kill one server and then let's see what happens. Um, let's see, uh, call it docker kill kc1. Let's kill the first key clock server. And if we have a look to uh, the logs, of uh, the Keyclock cluster, we can see the uh, KC2 server recognizing the server itself. The, the first server is um, um, no, no more available and there's a lost member and um, current members are only one host and uh, no others. So um, the second server recognizes the first server is down and there's only one server left. And let's do a refresh here. And you see the refresh just takes some seconds now because uh, the load balancer has to recognize, hey, I want to, um, uh, to get the data from the first server and the first server is down. And now I have to switch to the second server. And this will take some time. Uh, it's more than the five seconds I configured, but the, perhaps it's a, it's a configuration error. And um, now that the load balancer recognizes there's uh, another server available. The load balancer directs me to the second server and my session is still preserved. It's still available, available because we um, configured the, um, the cache owners count to two. So this um, information of uh, my identity of my, my um, session is replicated in the cluster. And um, yeah, but no, Start up again the first instance. Um, then go back to uh, the logs. We can see that the first instance is starting again. And um, in a few seconds, we will see second server um, recognizes 
there is again a new cluster member and forms the cluster of two of our two nodes again up and running. Now we can now access again um, our key cloud server, do a complete reload, um, still logged in, everything's running fine. And now we can do docker kill kc2. Um, also here, the first server is recognizing there's only one server left. And do again a reload here. And after load balancer recognizes um, there's another member in, in the cluster, then uh, we should be redirected to uh, the first node and our session should be preserved because the data will be replicated in the network. Here again, still logged in, still authenticated. We don't have to uh, log in again. Well, that's how easy it is to uh, get a key clock cluster up and running. Um, you just have to define the uh, proto proper protocol, which uh, is best for you. Um, the most flexible, as I pointed out, is the JDBC ping. And um, you can use it in near all um, environments. Um, but in Kubernetes or OpenShift environments, you can also use the uh, DNS ping protocol or the kube ping protocol and um, configure them properly to your needs. Configure the cache owners because if you have only one cache owner, the data might be lost in a case of uh, a node uh, will go down and configure the load balancer to use um, the proper uh, headers, to forward the proper headers. And um, yeah, as always, you can find all of the code um, linked in the video description. And I will also link um, the official documentation for the clustering and some blog posts from Keycloak for clustering so you can uh, read all the things. And yeah, if you have any experience with the clustering, put it in the comments. And uh, don't forget to give me some thumbs up if you like this video. Subscribe to the channel as always. And um, I will go to my cluster. See you. Bye.